G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Pumped on Property Show. Now, I'm not going to lie, I don't think I've been as excited to record an episode as this one, but we've got no idea where this is going to go. Like we haven't planned anything, we haven't written anything down, like this is just Eminem freestyling, <laughs> freeze life, rap battle stuff. We just went for a little surf this morning and afterwards I grabbed a coffee and we grabbed some food from the local organic health food shop as we do and <laughs> I was just telling Benny how I've been listening to this podcast from Kyle Kingsbury recently and it's just talking about like it just got us talking a bit more about purpose and, and values and everything like that and you know that's what we want to talk about like less property focused stuff but also always trying to incorporate it in but trying to find that purpose while still living your values is one of the hardest things to do and something that not many people that I, I know really focus on like our small friendship group certainly does For and sure. you know that's why we've kind of made it into one another's lives long term because we've all got similar interests in like challenging ourselves and each other with like tough questions. For sure. And like it's only because of those questions sometimes that I like start to focus on it and start thinking about these things and you know through podcasts, books, conversations with friends it's really helped us try and navigate that and you know for me at, at 28 now I still don't know what that purpose is going to be and and like I just want to be 100% honest in this podcast like I, I'm not 100% sure what I was put on this planet to do yet and that's completely normal and completely fine but one of the most important parts of my life is figuring out that purpose because I've got this like really funny idea and and um, it's more of a belief than an idea uh, basically every single old person that I've ever met, like any person over the age of 70, 80 that still has their mind together and is still moving around and, you know, able to communicate good stories and um, share their wisdom of living 80 years of life with other people. I've found that all of those people are still today, like today living their purpose. They've got something more to give back. They've got something to get out of bed for every single day. I love that. Like the biggest one was up at Secrets by the Lake. I went up there with Tay around this time last year. And what a the old guy, like you've met the old guy as well that runs it, right? Yeah. He's like in his mid 80s. <laughs> he's carrying our bags, chopping up our wood. Like the most romantic, kind, loving guy that I've, I've met. But he's, How do you romance you? <laughs> what did he do? Yeah, uh, let's, let's not get into that. It's, uh, that's MA rated. Is that that <laughs> spa? Yeah, he was rocking in the spa with us, you know, pulling off his like. skin. <laughs> you put but, it in like gold memory. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like gold. <laughs> but I seriously think that like purpose is the thing that keeps us going. It keeps you going for those later years when, you know, other things fall away. Like obviously as you grow up, you know, things don't aren't as good as they were back in the day probably but if you've got that purpose it's gonna drive you to continue pushing and continue living this life up until the day that you go love that example that you gave of this old guy that you hooked up with at the spa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the example. He was doing the round. He's still got, <laughs> he's still got the mojo. He's like, man, I'm here for one reason only. <laughs> um, but like, I like the simplicity of that. I was reading this epic little Japanese book at, um, like not that long ago, maybe a year ago. And it talked about exactly that. Like in a lot of these blue zone communities where people on average live for a bit longer, mm. They have a purpose, but it's not this huge Western purpose. Like I feel yeah. like sometimes the Western vision of purpose for life is actually really scary to me. It's like Fuck yeah, it you is. have to have it all figured out and you have to be living with purpose and presence in every moment. And it's like you'll never have a moment of insecurity or unhappiness or every decision has to be in alignment. Like and but, it's just a lot. Like it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And you study like Eastern ways of thinking as well. And it's like we're human. We're fully human. <laughs> We're human. You're going to have human experiences. And like the Chinese way even more, it's just like we are humans in an organic world that is deeply connected. And so it's like this concept of the, the Japanese way is just your purpose might be helping your neighbor or yeah. taking the weeds out of your garden in the morning. Like it doesn't have to be this lofty thing. Mm. And that 
changes at different life cycles and stages of your life. And I really like the simplicity of that because I, I like as long as I can remember, like from a little kid just felt like I was like born for a reason. And I don't mm. know if it was just mum and dad reinforcing, like you can do anything like all the parents did in the 80s to all of us and the early 90s. But it's like, I just, I have this sense of obligation to like, yeah, have a meaningful impact in my life. And that can sometimes be really intense and daunting, especially mm. before I had this particular vehicle of this business and this channel, like where we can talk so openly about everything that we're going into. Mm. It was just really, really intense. And like, I feel like it's very, 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 very difficult to live and find purpose consistently. Yeah. But it is very, very easy to identify values. And I think, sure. I think they're sort of separate. I do too. Together, you know what I mean? I think you need to be living in line with your values always to not be conflicted in your gut and in your heart. Yeah. And, you know, finding those values. I think the most, like one of the best things that I've recognized from living my values is like the people that I've been able to surround myself with yeah. are far more in align with my values, my personality type, who I want to be with. Because obviously you grow up, you go through school, university, your first job and you kind of pivot around, you find all these different friendship groups. But once you do that deep work and figure out what your values are, for some reason, you just gravitate towards these people that are on that same journey. And it just makes life so much easier to live. So much easier. Like I think it's an attraction thing. And it also is a natural yeah. repellent too. Like if, yeah. you know, certain yeah. people just start to slide away as well. And that's, that's all part of it. So I think like we'll come, I'm going to come back to purpose for me, but for values, like it is really simple. And I think Aubrey Marcus said it in an email that I was reading the other day. I think I, I might have sent it to you. I'm, I'm subscribed to him as well now. Like I just, it's just words of wisdom. It's so good. Like he's so honest, but he just said, you know, like if you want to look at your true values, not, not the values that you think you have, like not the social pressure and that ego pressure that you put on yourself but your true values just literally look at the way that you spend a month mm. how did you spend your time and that's clearly because we're people that can make free choices in this western world that are listening to this that that is your values and that was pretty confronting right yeah. because i've had this thing right where like my friends became my family from the time i was about 14 15 through till i was about 30 and that was the most important structure in my life. Like yeah. it was really, really, really important to me. And then in the last maybe six years since I started the business and got deeper into the family thing, it's like I really, really, really value having a small number of great people around me. But I felt this massive constant twisting of like I should be picking up the phone more regularly. I should be making the effort to catch up with some people more regularly. And I'm just like, after reading this email, it just helped me release that. It's like, it's not that I don't absolutely value friendships. It's more, I have a family and that family has become that tribe of like safe people around me. And then we have a business which is purposeful. Yeah. And then I like training and spending time doing stuff. And then it's like, instead of having like 30 people like I've had in the past that I was like so regularly trying to hook up, catch up with, like it was like, hook up with yeah yeah the boys now we know what you've been doing from 14 to 30 dirt bag. <laughs> and then it's like i just wrote down a list of like people here and people in sydney that i really want to maintain a relationship with and it took so much pressure off to just go shit like i don't have to just keep trying to carry some stuff forward just because i have you know what i mean 100 percent, and i think we've only got so much energy to give right yeah and it's like you've got you know a beautiful family but there's five people in your family you know plus your animals as well yeah and then you've got a business where you're employing seven people as well and it's like you've got their lives to worry about but then we've got the business where we're helping 12 amazing new people every single month and i found this as well and it's only just kind of triggered from have, hearing you say that it's like because I, I get the same, like I, I don't connect with my mates in Sydney as much as I would like to, but every time I'm with them, it's fine. It's, it's not an issue. So we've just got to let that go and realize that, you know, there's only so much emotional energy that we can mm. give back. And like in our business, like 100% of the time it's giving back. It's trying to teach people, trying to help people 
understand how to confidently move forward with the decisions that we've we've outlined and you know constantly hit goals and move forward and learn more like there's only so much that you can do there mm. so like there's a lot of hats obviously that you got to wear and you know take off and swap it like you know your boss hat compared to your like client management hat and then your boss hat compared to your dad hat yeah. and your husband hat like there's so many different things but I think it's like because we get to live with purpose like you know my purpose I seriously think is just to help people become better versions of themselves like that's that's what I sort of think it is and you know fortunately I've been able to find a day-to-day job where I get to spend 30 to 40 hours a week helping people it's crazy and it's like an amazing opportunity so like I'm not twisted with those those values but then I, I look at you know the world and I look at you know third world countries African countries where you know how many kids are dying every single year because they don't have clean water and then yeah. you look at the favelas in Brazil and um what is it that the in India the um what, yeah I know what, what you the, mean. where all the the poor the slums. people yeah the slums of India and it's just like like there's such a deep part of me that's like well what about them you know, like, and it's, but it's so hard, right? Like this, this conversation is always so hard to figure out what you really should be doing or who you should be prioritizing. It's a, it's an interesting one, man. It's so tricky because like at the end of the day, we're all people and we're all, every single person in the world is struggling with the same things. Yeah. Sometimes you're in flow, sometimes you're in a good space. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes hard times last longer than they need to. And other times they pass and Mm. it's like I think from a values perspective if you're sitting down there and going like you know it's cool to hear you guys talk about values but I don't really understand mine like there's two things that I would say that have been so helpful for me one is sitting down and going I'm 100 years of age today yeah I'm grateful for these things in my life at this stage and it's like it cuts out a lot of the noise of what Mm. you're doing and it cuts straight to the core of like well I'm like I did it the other day again, it's like, I'm so grateful I'm spending time with you, mm. my family, like my friends, my kids, Lisa, mm. I'm in nature, like I'm just moving well, like I'm so grateful for all of the adventures I've had and all of the people's lives I've been able to positively yeah. impact and it's like, there wasn't too much stuff about like another property. Yeah, money or, or success. Money or an extra client a month or... Mm you know another business it was more like the contribution thing for sure and you know like that's a good way to do it as well but then I I also think like for for myself like I I've you know meditated on the idea of emptiness which is like the heaviest thing that you can really do because it's the idea that like everything's going to end at some point in time it's like Everyone says that like when you pass, you are going to, your life is going to flash before your eyes. And the way that I live my life is like, what do I want that flash to be? Wow. Like, what do you want that flash to be? Like, do you want it to be me, 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 me? Or do you, like naturally you're going to want it to be the people that you love, Mm. the people that you care about, the people that, you know, make you a better version of yourself, amazing, joyful experiences. And, you know, it, definitely helps thinking about those scary things you know at the end of your life you're 100 you're getting close to the end of your life you know thinking about those things to to cut out the bullshit and just like immediately cut down to the core I love that man like that's one of the coolest things I've ever heard actually like it's just that's huge I think you know one of the things like I'm a process orientated person and like for me discovering values wasn't sitting there and like just thinking on them and overthinking them and like letting all the brain like impact the body stuff. Yeah. So what I did was there's this book called The Happiness Trap, which I think is very helpful, particularly the third chapter around values. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those of you suffering like anxiety or depression, the first two chapters can be really helpful to understand those like illnesses a bit better. But like there's these cards that you can buy with the book and it's like you can put health down or you can put wealth down or family down or relationships down there's 60 odd cards and it's like a yes no pile if for that particular part of your life this thing's important and it might be like freedom or it might be control or it might be love or it might be compassion or it might be what it's just words but they're 
powerful emotional words. And then you just sift through. And then once you've got your pile of like half the decks being cut, you then go through and cut it again. And then once you've cut it, you then put them in, you know, a row of five and five and you shift them up until, and then you get rid of the bottom five and then you place the top five values for that thing. Mm. And what was really weird for me is like a lot of the things that I thought I valued around family were just not in the cards. Like it was like I had all of these things, but one really weird one that came up for me is like within my family, I also really valued freedom, which is like a, in my mind a contradictory thing to having like a really stable family life. And so how that had manifested for me for like 10 years was I'd love to go away on these little surf trips or these little like weekends away with friends to just like chill. Yeah. And then I'd come back to family, but it's like acknowledging that freedom was important to me. Yeah. You know, I just didn't need to run away anymore. It was just like, hey, Lise, like I just need to go for a surf this morning. And it's like, cool, go for a surf. And then it's like that replace these big runaway things you know what i mean and it's like by learning what your values are it can really help pull you the swings that can be very yeah. very big for some people into much more manageable yeah. things that don't completely destabilize your life for the week you come back from something like that yeah like it pulls you towards who you're truly meant to be yeah. and like we're constantly living in conflict of ourselves yeah. like every single decision that you make like couple of weekends ago, I had a big, big weekend on the booze and like, I came into Benny and I was like, like frazzled on a, on a Tuesday or something. And Ben just like, oh man, like, just think about like the decisions that you've made. And it's like, that's living in conflict with, with my true values. And it's just having that recognition of those things and, and checking in. Like, I think that's an amazing book for people to go like do like, that's such an investment in your future. If you want to fast track this journey, mm. just go buy the happiness trap with the cards on top of it and, and go through those exercises because that seems way easier than like sitting with your legs crossed, breathing, meditating for uh. hours and hours and hours and hours. But it's, it's so important to find those values and, and live true to them because it just, I just, I feel more open when I'm living with my values. Completely, man. Like I love that. In this book, it sort of talks about what you just mentioned. Like if you, in terms of your values, like you generally feel good and open when you live in them. Yeah. And you generally feel like twisted or stiff if you're not or like intense, agitated, anxious, depressed. And it's like, I think about that now. It's like what decision in this moment will be a towards my values decision. And I was really, really, really caught up in my head for the last part of the week. And I was just like, I literally came home and I'm like, I can stay in that space or I can just go, well, what decision now is going to like take me towards mm. it? And it's like, well, I value my family. I'm just going to like really go all in here for this afternoon and just enjoy that time with them jumped in the spa with the kids like mucked around cooked some dinner together like mm. had a big cuddle like all of them slept in the bed with me that night and i'm just like man there's just so many ways to deal with these mm. awkward times that we feel in our life but it's mm. like what if the way that we dealt with them wasn't avoidance and it was like a towards decision yeah. versus eating a whole bunch of really yeah. shit food or smashing drinks for a full weekend not that i don't love doing that i fucking love drinking every, a couple times a year now or overtraining or overworking or overthinking or over meditating or yeah, some people, like one thing I, I listened to in a podcast recently was so funny it was talking about like humans are just natural addicts to anything yeah, it's like everybody's got their own crutch to bear and you know one person is going to focus on one thing like we're all dopamine addicts is what the yeah. whole thing was about it's like everybody's just searching for their dopamine hit and you know but so often we don't make the right decisions that are going to like in, improve our longevity or, you know, have that lasting dopamine effect as opposed to just being like short spikes. Everybody just thinks like this is the easiest way for me to get it. So that's what I'm going to do. But if you can really figure out these deeper subconscious thoughts and emotions and way, a way of living, then it just makes your life so much easier to live. And, um, yeah, like I think just things are going to come towards you a lot more when you are living in flow and harmony with, with who you are as a person because I think everybody was put on this planet for some sort of purpose, regardless of what it was. You know, some people are natural born 
like mothers or, or fathers, like that's just what they were put on this planet to do, just to raise kids. Some people were natural born leaders that were meant to like, you know, influence others and support others. You know, some people are here to just like make things beautiful. And you think about like artists or musicians or bloody landscape architects, whoever, it, whatever it might be, like everybody has got that purpose. And I think the good thing about jumping into values first is the fact that if you figure out those values, then I believe that it's going to guide you toward the pipe path of finding your purpose naturally it will automatically happen yeah you know it's really interesting that you say that i was reading this book recently that my wife gave me called untamed i forget the name of the chick but she's written a few books and there was this part that i took like that was really helpful for me and she's like often i catch myself late Mm. it's like i catch myself after i've made the decision it's like and that's just human nature. It's like that, as you said, that dopamine hit. And it's like, so what she did is she wrote down this list of things that she does when she's living her values. And she would read this list when she's feeling good or bad. Mm-hmm. And behaviors in her life that are generally things that she does when she's not living her values. And so for me, sometimes I like will go to bed later, eat shittier foods stop training, stop like meditating or being mindful, yeah. like get over caught in my thoughts. Maybe I want to drink, Not maybe surf. I want to work too much, maybe I won't surf, like maybe I'll just completely take myself away from like the people that actually make me feel better and just not want to see anyone for three weeks. And it's like I am aware of those things and it's like so when you're feeling good, check in with the not good list. Yeah. When you're feeling bad, check in with the good list and it's instead of your mind trying to figure itself out and hook and hook and hook and then you end up in like Mm. the hole with the lotion on (laughs) it's like you know what i mean you can check in early and go oh shit like the last two nights i've been going to bed a bit later and i've been craving sugar for the hit or maybe on the weekend like instead of just having a good habit with my phone where i just checked in a couple of times in the day i was drawn to the phone more and mucking around with it and watching motivational stuff because I was looking for like to keep my adrenaline up yeah and it's like it was really powerful as like a thing that you can put in your wallet where it's just like it's just checking in with where you're at good or bad I I did that recently as well and I was telling I think I was talking about it on a podcast recently as well but like the start of this year has been pretty wild for me Um, moving into a new house renovating that house spending a lot of cash buying another investment property um you know there was just a lot a lot going on and i got to a point in probably may june where i was just like okay i need to i need to figure out like myself i need to get back to simon because i felt really twisted in myself as as to the the decisions i was making it was all that i wasn't doing as much yoga i wasn't doing as much meditation i wasn't stretching as much i wasn't getting in the water as much I was drinking a little bit more on the weekends and all of these different things were outlets to try and run away from the actual issues. But what I did is I sat, my, I went down to the beach, yeah. sat down, watched the moon come up, wrote a note to myself. I just like was like sitting on the beach thinking, what question do I need to answer right now? Because there's something that's not right within me. And I just wrote, who am I at the top of the page? And then just started writing and whatever came out came out and you know it it really pointed me down towards those values as well and just got me back to who I am and it's like you know I'm a really fun adventurous guy that likes doing lots of activities and and lots of things with the people that I care about you know I'm a good friend and a good listener and I'm always going to be there to support I'm successful and I've made good decisions and it's just like a yeah, it's like, you know, tooting your own horn a little bit. But sometimes we need that. Like sometimes yeah. we need to be compassionate to ourselves and pat ourselves on the back and be Always. appreciative of what we've achieved and who we actually are because, you know, we all feel conflicted at times, but you need to get back to that flow state to to live the best possible life and, and be happy and get that longer term dopamine hit and, and be the most present version of yourself that's, actually living in line with those values i I so love that man like there's so many ways to do this work and it's different for everyone but it's like find what works for you and 
I think just go all in on it. Yeah, I think finding who you are is important, and so many people don't know. And you know, the happiness trap, great book to to guide you down that. But then, even just going and doing a Myers Briggs personality type test. Yeah. Like if you do that, you'll see that there is some certain things about your personality type that make you who you are. Some subconscious things, and then you know, I'm a kind of spiritual guy as well, and you know, I think that everything is far more connected than what meets the eye and mm. I'm kind of it's not like I'm into the horoscopes but like I think there is a bit more meaning to when we we're born and what was happening in the world but you can even read those things as well and it can actually make you realize some of those subconscious thoughts about like oh that's the reason that I have that personality type or that's the reason that I enjoy doing those things more than some other things I love that man you know like understanding who you are are uh, not like the ego or the pain body mm. like Eckhart says like not the roles that you play or like the mask that you have to put on but like who we are and this is why I just love having kids so much because we are like born so like pure Perfect. it's not even funny and like my approach to parenting is like I call it free range it's just like just let them be themselves like the world's going to belt them down and it's like let I don't need to control I need to set boundaries so that my kids are safe because they don't understand risk like I do for them but not in an over controlling way and like I've hung out with so many different parents and kids now and it's like that approach that I take to my kids I think I take to myself like mm. I know that I'm multi-dimensional like I know that my mind is a little bit more on than some other people's I know that I don't just have one thing that I enjoy doing and I know that I'm not consistent with everything or with friends or with people. Like, so it's like, I'm just starting to, as you said, like be kinder on that mm. and accepting that a little bit more and just go, fuck man, like I'm really spinning off the planet this week. But that doesn't mean that I don't know who I am at mm. my core. Like whether I don't know who I am at my core, but I know that I know, if you know what I mean, like I know that I know that I'm just, here and that i'm just the observer of what's going on and like yeah. it's all good in my world you know what you i mean trust it like you trust who like you are and the decisions it. that you're making but that's only because you've yeah. done the deep work but then you're like you move into finding that purpose which is the fucking hardest thing to do like it's 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 the hardest thing to do like whew, i don't even know where to begin of transitioning your values into your purpose because we do live in, you know, Western Western culture, Western society, where you are forced to work to put a roof over your head and put food at the table for yourself and the people that you love and care about. So there's certain decisions and contradictions that we need to live by to make sure that that we can have those basic those basic needs met. But then, like elevating it to the next level and and finding that purpose and living that purpose is going to be the thing that you know gets us back to what we'll probably put on this planet to do which is just have an amazing connected experience i love that man like what i was just thinking with that is there's two things that i wish i had have thought more about younger or someone had have helped me see like one is we are all born with some things that we are like just absolutely like just natural to us better at than most other people yeah for sure i'm not talking about in the competitive way i'm talking about just some people are just huge hearts like yeah some people are really good listeners some people are just gutsy and they will just great storytellers you know? say how it is like some people are really really athletic or some people's minds work really good with numbers and it's like if you can figure out like in terms of finding purpose what those original things were stripping everything back and i've spent a lot of time doing this like i understand what i'm better at than most because of how i am born mm. and wired and then the flip side of that is like the nature side and that is what do you truly enjoy doing like what mm. would you do for free every single day of your life for the rest of your life yeah and i think in partnering what you're naturally good at with what you really enjoy yeah minus the fear and all the like i can't give myself the authority to do this by doing what you would do for free i have found that you'll become a millionaire like yeah. it is just there's something about the the 
the pool of people that are passionately living their life. Like I didn't think property was going to be my purpose or my passion. What I believe my purpose is is the same as you helping other people realize mm. that they can do anything they want to do. Like mm. property is the vehicle to choices and choices is the vehicle to becoming your best self. Mm. And by becoming your best self, you'll influence and inspire others and the world will change for the better. And yeah, it is about the world changing for the better that this shit is about for you and me. Yeah. And so it's like, I, I, I've been reading a lot of the, like the Taoist stuff yeah. and the way is just constantly unfolding. And we talk about it all the time in the office, like just move out of your own way. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can move out of your own way and that's getting rid of all the baggage and the fear and the control and it has to be, and then you add in what you're good at and what you would do for free every day. I know, I know people like that are photographers that are making $10 a year. And I know photographers that are making $10 million a year. I know people that love training and I know people making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year doing training shit. Yeah. It's like, the difference between them is stepping out of your own way and just really, really committing to that thing that you love. And that thing changes as well, by the way. Like, it's not one thing. It's like, mm. but this step will enable that step. And if you can live with that passion, the purpose will follow because yeah. at some point you'll have gone deeper than 99.99% of humans alive. And all of a sudden you'll pop out better than those people because it was never work for you. It was never hard. It'll just naturally come. It'll come. Yeah. And that's like a major driver for us in the business. Like I, I tell every single person that I have a conversation with um, through Pumped, it's like, like property is a vehicle. Property is a vehicle that we've chosen and we've found our passion. Like I personally love investing in real estate and I've been learning a little bit about trading the stock market and, crypto just to see if it tickled my fancy and it it just doesn't like it, it just, just doesn't, doesn't. like I, I love property and and i've just got to recognize that and, and focus on that but what i always say is property is a vehicle but our goal and our our passion is to really be, ideally become financially free yeah. because like finance is probably what is the handbrake for everybody to doing that because it's all well and good to say oh what would you do for free but you can't just go do something for free because mm. we have life, life happens. And so finding that financial freedom or like working towards something that's going to enable you to achieve financial freedom takes that burden away from you. So then you can actually go, well, now I'm earning an income without having to work, without having to work for somebody else. Now I can do something for free. Now I can do something that I just want to do. And it might be, you know, making boutique tables, you know, like a carpenter making boutique tables. It might be taking people on snorkeling adventures, you know, or bushwalking trips or, you know, baking cakes or art, whatever it is, right? Like, as you said, there's so many different things, but giving you yourself can the do space that. to find it and explore that and shut doors, like just shut doors. If it's not right, just shut the door, move on. Yeah. And I think we're spoiled for choice now as well. Like we can pivot, especially the younger generations that are coming up. Like, the idea of just picking one career and then working in that one career for 40 years. It's just like, I don't think that is the way that people are going to live moving forward. And with the automation of a lot of different jobs from, you know, robots and artificial intelligence becoming way more prevalent, it's going to force humans into this position where they're going to have to make these decisions mm -hmm. and find the things that they can actually add value to the world with something that a robot's never, ever going to be able to do. You know, it's funny, man. Like if I take myself back first to 2009 when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I picked up this book and we're going to a friend's party. And at that stage of my life, like I was massively into health, but I was still into like absolutely sending it. Like, <laughs> and so we go to this party that would traditionally be just a huge day. There was like a DJ. It was on the water down in Brisbane. And I just... I literally went there, said g'day to everyone and then went light on my own by the side of the pool for eight hours and finished the book. And I'm like, it was like, oh my, it was just like an, oh my God, I found it moment. Mm. And then I was in uni for the next year and a half and my approach to uni changed from like doing the subjects to like, I want to go get experience so that I can like increase my income quicker when I get out. Yeah. 
And I remember buying my first property and I was really scared. It was a two bedroom unit in Miranda on the south side of Sydney. But what changed after that is I found an absolute passion for it and I started to buy the Residex reports. I started to spend every weekend with one of my best mates, Maka, and we'd just go driving the gong or driving Central Coast, Central Coast every weekend for yeah. six months to just inspect houses and find suburbs. And, and then from that like obsession, like I already knew, I remember calling my mentor at the time, Colin, when I was working with IBM and I was like, four months into the grad program and I'm like, I just, I caught him, I'm like, I cannot do this anymore. And he's like, you are making the biggest mistake if you walk away from what this brand's going to do for your future. And so I like did what everyone does and like, okay, cool. Like my mentor said I should yeah. stick it out and I stuck it out. For five years, I tried to get into the property industry before I actually jumped into it, mm. before someone gave me a chance because I was building skills in not in that industry. And the more skills that you build, the further away from wanting to start at the bottom of a new space you become. Yeah, of course. I was just trying and I went from IBM to renewable energy, which I've got a massive passion for, into digital marketing and then finally found a marketing role in building. And my father-in-law, who's been through 30 years of booms and busts related to property, is like, you'd never want to be in this space. It is so intense. And volatile. You know, we literally get some news from APRA and the entire industry stops for six months. That was ridiculous. We get a guy jumping on TV going, The property market's gonna gonna crash by 6%. How's that guy? How much wealth has that guy cost Australians by keeping them on the fence while their properties went up 40%? Like, and that's, it's just, but you know, the, the boom and busty side is irrelevant. Like what I wish I had have listened to was that calling. I was like working at IBM and on weekends for free opening up doors for Ray Wyatt on a Saturday yeah. for this guy because I wanted to learn wanted to learn this stuff and it's like then I started to write a blog which was pumped on property for at least two years before I had the confidence to go into this business mm. for free like I was literally spending three hours three times a week writing it and I approached the bloggers like what do I want to learn deep dived into that and then wrote <laughs> an article about it I'm like this is a learning opportunity that I can share with others and it's like what is it, you know, there's an absolute reality with this stuff, mm. but it's like there's a, also a cost of not being passionate about something. Your boss sees it yeah. and you don't give a fuck because yeah. you don't put in the reps. Yeah, it's like Andrew, our brother-in-law, he um, had been working in graphic design for a while and he was designing games for pokey machines and he just hates gambling and couldn't stand working in that job, but it was the means to an end and like, he was unhappy for years, but now he's finally transitioned to trust himself, to back himself for the first time. And he and his brother have gone into business and they're running their own show now. They're controlling their own hours. They're deciding what type of work they want to be doing, what type of contribution. And he's the happiest I've ever seen him in my whole entire life. Completely. But it was such a risk for him to walk away from that, to then go into what it is. But he took that risk and backed himself. And now he's the happiest he's ever been and sometimes you just gotta you gotta do it you gotta take the pill there's people that say to me when i think about like figuring out what you're good at and then also what you enjoy it's like it's scary to go all in like yeah. it's really scary to go all in like it's really uncomfortable it's also just like you know you are born with some certain skills and it's it's cool to polish your weaknesses i'm a big believer in Mm. like figuring out where your blind spots are and working on those Mm. things like i would say i've got one of the highest attention to details of any person i know now five years ago or sorry six years ago when i was working for someone else my boss was just like slow down to speed up man like my attention to detail was fucking horrible Mm. like that's a learned behavior because that one behavior creates trust and Mm. it creates consistent results and it's like you can focus on those things but it's like what i'm great at is committing and then helping other people make Mm. it happen and it's like I just wish someone had have said like double down on those things mm. and then that thing that you would do for free, I did it yeah, for give it free a crack. for yeah. so long. Like I did it part time for so long, like just build the skills around it. And it's not just good enough to go, what's that thing I enjoy? 
in the property industry, you need to know negotiating. Yeah. Which I just happen to love. Yeah. Like I don't have that thing, neither do you, where it's like, a no doesn't mean anything to yeah. me when I hear it from an agent. It's like, okay, well, that's cool. What else can we do? Just haven't asked the right question. Another question, better question. And then it's like, you need to know how to sell. Like you need to know how to market. You need to have a very high attention to detail and the ability to consistently do the same thing constantly. It's mm. like, if there's something that you know that you would love to do that might be a purpose in the future mm. if you do it often enough, what are the tangible skills that you can yeah. actually do to make that transition easier? So I went, no one's letting me into property for five years. Like I was just so frustrated because I wanted in, okay, what would get me in sales and marketing, yeah. project management, I did the, went and did it. Yeah, I did the exact same thing in my early 20s. I had no idea. I had no vision, I had no direction at the time. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I constantly had all these people just going, oh, don't worry about it. You'll be fine because you've got this, that, and the other, because I'm a good communicator, because, you know, I, you know I'm a people person. I'm, I'm always, like, projecting a good energy that people want to be around. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, cool. Thanks Still for letting lost, me know man. what I'm good at, <laughs> but, like, it's not actually helping me right now. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, i got to take matters into my own hands. What should I do? And... I decided to like dip my toe in the pool, go do a management TAFE course and loved it. I was like, oh, cool. Like I think, you know, based on the skills that I'm good at, communicating with people, um, I, I really like the whole management side of things and like, you know, running the show. And then from there, I was like, okay, well, now that I know I'm okay with studying and I think it's a path, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go into to management and marketing. But it wasn't just because of, of what I thought it was, I was good at, but it was like, well, what is going to be the broader spectrum? Because I didn't know at the time what my direction was or what my purpose was or what I was supposed to be doing. I then went, well, what's the broadest thing that I could possibly do that's gonna give me the most opportunity? I love that. And went and did a, a management and marketing degree and um, you know, like didn't necessarily matter in terms of my journey to property because you don't don't necessarily need it for property but the skills that i learned at uni were so transferable to anything in life which was the ability to learn like how can i in like take in information and and then implement in implement that because action is is the biggest thing action's everything um so i i focus on that and then i had the opportunity you called me like i was a sydney boy like i was a full-on sydney boy southern shire boy like everybody knows the shire in sydney working on the eastern beaches like, like just having a fun time new people everywhere yeah i was i was living my best life and i was comfortable with that life but then i had a little bit of a shake up with a with a breakup and then ben was like bro i need you up here in queensland um i want you to come and and start working with me and I knew nothing about property at the time. Like, I think you may have given me Rich Dad Poor Dad or something, but like, I knew nothing at the time. And I'm like, you know, screw it. I'm going to back myself. I'm going to go uproot my life, move to Queensland, give this a crack. Shit. Literally in the first week of, of work, and I'm like, oh, cool. This is fun. Like, I really enjoyed it. And I'm like, cool. This is something that I am passionate about. This is something that I'm willing to trade the time away from my life. Um, from the things that I, I love to do the most because, you know, I get so much opportunity and it's all the skills that we get to learn. You know, I get to learn to market. I get to learn to sell. I get to talk to amazing people doing amazing things every single day. And, you know, I get to also invest in real estate every single week with, with our clients as well. And also the big picture strategy thinking and, and things like that. Like it really allows me to do the things that I'm good at whilst also help people and continuously building those skills that I'm going to need in the future to, to like transition into whatever it ends up being, which, you know, for myself, I really think it's just like helping people become the best versions of themselves in the most complete way. I love that. Man. Like financially, health, like relationships, Mental. mindfulness, absolutely everything because I try and live that life where I am just, the best version of myself and everybody's got their own vices um but you work through them slowly but surely and you know i just want to be doing that like same as you it's like we just want people to be doing the things that they were put on this planet to do that make them the happiest because 
the compound effect of that is a much better world to live in than what we do right now. I love that so much, man. Like it's really inspiring to hear all that. And you know, it's, inc- it's incredible how things work out and doors open up. I think one of the things that people miss communicate or confuse with like living a values based life of the values that are important to you plus figuring out and finding purpose and hopefully getting to live that as well is that it's easy or once you do that it's all going to work out but it's like actually the opposite of it like I said something to you the other day I think we'd all had a big day you'd just come off like seven hours of back-to-back calls and so Mm. had I and it's exhausting because we give it everything. It's like, mm. it's like we are legitimately like, if this is the only opportunity we have to tweak this person's life for the better, there's such a responsibility to help that it's like, it's not just the transaction. It's no. not just buying a property for someone. We'll buy, I believe, the best properties in the industry for people. Like, I think no our process and our education absolutely shits all over everyone else. Like it's like, a, it's like a Tesla versus a Kia. Like, yeah just we are just so invested in getting better every second of every day compared to our competition we do we literally change something every week for the better it's just like learn immediately pivot yeah and it's like but it doesn't mean that it's not hard and we walked out and you're like yeah but i'd prefer to be doing this meaningful work and walk out of here like i've left it all on the table today than to walk out for the next five years being one foot in one foot out yeah you know Doing a Shop job. clocking in timestamps. Yeah, exactly. And But I get that because I've clocked in yeah. 10 hours, 15 or oh, 15 years of timestamps. And it had a means to an end because I had this little passion on the side. And the passion was helping people and getting financially free through property. And it's like, if you, you not everyone's going to be able to live it straight away. It took me like over 10 years to find it and then another five years to get in mm. it. But it's like people can slowly figure it out yeah it's like i think you just got to make the decision of how do you want to live this life do you want life to happen at you where you're constantly finding excuses to not be a better version of yourself or do you want to live life like it's happening for you like the first breath like the first breath that you take outside in the morning isn't the best thing that's happened to you when you see all of the different colors when you look out into a forest isn't the most magical, wonderful thing that you've ever seen. The fact that your your wife might be growing another human inside of them and how that happens and that's going to be a, a functioning member of society that's going to add value to other people's lives. Like there is or a, a way... to link with like you were. <laughs> you know, a fucking misguided youth that ends up figuring it out later on because fuck man i was like a little piece of shit back yeah me too me too me too <laughs> but never but, never like never find, find that you know find what type of person that you want to we've fortunately found it but we've got a lot of work to do we've still got a lot of vices we've still got a lot of things that we need to learn and for me experience you know like there's just certain things that i haven't had a chance of experiencing because i'm young And I understand that like it's going to be a continuous journey, but that devotion to continuously be a better version of myself tomorrow than I was today, learning more is only going to push me in the one direction, which (laughs) into one direction sound like (laughs) the band. They're my favorite band. You light up my life. (laughs) I don't even know any of those songs. (laughs) She do. (laughs) (laughs) I've actually got the lyrics tattooed on my back. (laughs) It's just... The wrist tattoo bubble verse. (laughs) But, you know, I I just want people to, like, understand that, like, you know, we love investing and we love property so much and and it's our passion. But there's so much more that goes into this and, like, that allows us to have these types of open conversations and connect with people on a deeper level. And I just, yeah, I hope you can take some, like, I don't know, whatever you can take from, from these types of podcasts and, implement it into your life in one way or another so that you can just start to find that path to happiness and a fulfilled purposeful life 100 percent. like we just genuinely want the best for every single person listening to or watching this and it's little steps and so many of them over time and the way is tricky to find like the more you look for it the more it disappears sometimes it's just trusting that you're heading in the right direction whether you think you are or not and you're exactly where you are supposed to be like I do 
the boho beautiful yoga thing each morning or like I did for a lot of years. Um, and it's like, there's this one quote at the start every morning. It's like, you are exactly where you are supposed to I be right now. So and I'm just much. like, God, I it need it every morning too. <laughs> pressure off. Like, like I, like it just takes the pressure off. And I think it's going to happen for the people that are looking for it and that are open to it. And maybe it's already happening. It's just hard to like recognize it at the moment as well. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm so grateful to do this stuff yeah, with you, man. It's just fucking earth, bro. so beautiful. And, and I'm just so grateful for all of you guys that are reaching listen out. Listen and support. Yeah, like we um, are just working with the most beautiful people that are so values aligned with us at the moment and they're getting incredibly good financial results that are going to set them up for their futures. I'm just really grateful for all of you incredible people that are like listening and reaching out because it's just helping us fulfill our dreams and like what we're supposed to be doing as well so thank you for that seriously guys thank you so much oh, sweaty. so sweaty